Hey folks, it's Tone from V Artifacts. Today we're going to tear down a virtual research V6 stereoscopic head mounted display. This is the successor to the VR4. Um, it's twice the resolution. Normally you run it at 640 by 480 at 60 Hertz on your VGA card. It accepts either monoscopic, meaning one signal, or stereoscopic, two signals. You'd need a dual head VGA or something like that because it actually has two connectors, one for the left eye and one for the right eye on the control box. We'll get back to that. Um, first, let's take apart our helmet. It's actually quite easy to do because you really only need two tools. You need a small Phillips head screwdriver and you need a 1 16th inch hex key. So, let's take a look and we'll start working on it. It's got some nice Sennheiser HD 25 headphones on there. Let's first pull the headphones off. That's actually quite easy. You just undo this little screw with your hex key at the bottom of the headphone. We'll hang on to that and slide the headphone off. And there is a connector here. The same with the other side. Yeah. Have a look at what I'm working on here. Hopefully it won't go too much out of focus. The headphone is just on a little metal ridged post. Comes right off. The connector, there you go, comes right out. Just the way Sennheiser made it. Okay. So now let's get inside the front of the helmet. We need to undo these knobs, just turn them counterclockwise and they actually screw right off of the helmet. There's four screws on the underside of the helmet, here, 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 and here, that need to be done. They're standard Phillips head screws. We'll do them with our little Phillips head screwdriver. And then last, we need to release this vacuum formed cover. And there's another hex retaining screw right here, um, back where the headphone pivots. And it comes right out. It's fairly long. And along with it is a little plastic retainer. The plastic retainer looks like this. Has a square back end which helps align it. We're going to do the same thing on the other side here. You'll see also that the headphone bracket comes out and that's composed of another little plastic part and a metal pivoting bracket. And then we're pretty much ready to reveal the inside of our Virtual Research V6. Just simply pull the shell away and we're inside. Now for those of you who've seen the VR4 teardown that I did, one of the things you'll notice right away is it actually looks simpler in here and that's because a lot of the circuitry has been moved to the control box. We have now a custom cable that comes into the back of the V6 and this cable is used also as a counterweight to balance it so that it's not front heavy. Runs in through this hollow metal tube and then comes out of the tube but is sheathed with this nice nylon braid and then terminated with a not-so-fancy junction made with electrical tape going down to some JST connectors on the uh, circuit boards that are behind the LCDs. Um, another kind of cute thing with this is um, the circuit boards, they're not screwed on. They're actually put on with Velcro. 
and so you can pry them loose pretty darn easy if you want to have a look at them and they've got some surface mount chips and then deeper inside is this is a termination board for the fluorescent backlight and then in front of the backlight you'll find the actual LCD panel and then in front of that is the optics. A couple of other things to notice your backlight inverters are here these step up the uh, voltage uh, to something that will uh, ignite the fluorescent backlights they're actually encased in mu metal and then wrapped with electrical tape um, to reduce interference um, the inner pupillary distance controls are actually um, somewhat simpler than the VR4 I'm going to put a knob back on so you can see them and you can see now that it changes the space in the eye it's a, just a it's a little worm screw that's in here and two platforms that ride on a plastic rail um, that are controlled by this worm screw. Um, the other big difference between this and a VR4 is how the fore aft adjustment works. On the VR6, the fore aft adjustment is really the whole lens platform slides on this track right here. Um, forward and backward but in the VR4 the whole shell slides with it but in the V6 the shell actually stays stationary while the optics move forward and backward to allow for space for your eyeglasses or for people with funny shaped foreheads or whatever and you can see that there's slots in the side of the shell that allow a range of movement. The shell has a nice sort of neoprene foam light block, keeps the light from leaking in underneath and is uh, easily interchangeable. That just glued in, you can peel it off and put a new one on. Um, this is a new setup in the V6 that applies some support at the top of your head with this flexible spring steel right here. There's also um, a light block in the front that essentially shields your eyes from all of the seeing all the electronics inside the helmet. Um, if you wanted to remove the light block it's relatively straightforward. There's um, a couple of screws right here to pull the light block out and then you really got it stripped down pretty much to the basics on top here you'll see some jam nuts this adjusts the tension of the 4F slider you want it to be snug but not so hard that you can't move it um, kind of a trade-off and uh, that's pretty much the guts of the V6 helmet. Um, has the advantage of being twice the resolution of the VR4. Um, has a nice depixelization filter, um, optical filter in front of the LCD that helps smooth out some of the jaggies or the transistor structure of the LCD display. Uh, and all in all, it gives you a fairly wide field of view, something like uh, 60, 65 degrees. Um, not bad. Um, real good exit pupil. The lens lenses are about 30 millimeters in diameter here. Um, it means it's not very fussy um, about the interpupillary distance and getting it in front of your eyes. So all that's really nice. Um, we'll look at the control box and the power supply. Comes with a fairly bulky international power supply, 5 volts at 3 amps, plus 24 at 7 tenths of an amp, and minus 12 at 1 half an amp. Um, plugs in on this multi pin DIN connector. This is what a V6 control box looks like. The front, which accepts 
the helmet is a very high density it's a SCSI style connector that goes in here um, the pins are kind of fragile I try to keep mine hooked up as much as possible um, there is a brightness and contrast knob here power switch and a dual indicator light uh, top indicator is on off the bottom indicator is whether it's operating monoscopic or stereoscopic it automatically senses whether it's in stereo or not there is a fan up here in the top because uh, this control box generates some heat um, and so there's intakes on one side and when we open it up you'll see there's a heat sink that corresponds to that on the back um, we have two video inputs, one for the left eye, one for the right eye. If you only drive the left eye, you, it, the control box automatically senses and directs this one signal to both eyes. Uh, this is the way you'd run it monoscopically. There's a slave monitor out that's linked to the left eye so that you could also drive a standard VGA style monitor. Um, a 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone input um, standard Walkman style plug um, there's an option for a microphone output that is a microphone that's located in the helmet um, and sends a signal down to this connector um, the helmet we're looking at today does not have a microphone installed but that's a virtual research option that was available when they manufactured it now to get inside our control box not too hard. Um, really what we probably want to do is undo these two screws, this one here, this one here, and then we also have to remove these knobs by pulling them off and undoing the little captive nuts that um, hold the adjustment potentiometers to the front panel. You would think you have to disconnect the power switch, but actually the power switch stays on the front panel um, when you disassemble it um, and is run by a, a set of wires back to a connector on the board. Um, rather than tear this one up anymore, we've got one that's already disassembled here. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, there are a lot of uh, proprietary Epson chips that are matched to the LCDs um, in the helmet. Um, this white thing here is a connector for the power switch that normally is bridged with a little cable harness and goes to the back of the power switch. Indicator light, um, brightness and contrast, connection for the helmet, um, and on the back side we have our video inputs and monitor slave output. This board actually uh, is built to drive both the virtual research V6 and V8. There's just a couple of jumper settings on the inside that let you switch it so that it supports either the V6 or the V8s. One thing I'll really caution you about is this connection to the helmet is electrically quite fragile. That is that if you plug the helmet in with the power on it's quite likely that you're going to blow one of the Epson driver, one or both of the Epson driver chips. Um, so be very very careful when connecting and disconnecting this connector um, that you don't do it with the power on. So that is your quick tour of the virtual research V6. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, it's a great helmet, really rugged, um, very adjustable, very comfortable. Um, one of my all-time favorites because it's wide angle and ready to go. Thanks, and I will see you next time.